Chapter 40 is the last book of Exodus. It is the culmination of God's preparation of the Hebrews after they left the slavery of Egypt. God spent a year of countless miracles correcting and disciplining his people, directing them through Moses, and assigning tasks to them. All this in order to prepare the people and the tabernacle for worship. Chapter 40, verse 1 through 3. The Lord spoke to Moses on the first day of the meeting, on the first day of the month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall, you shall put in it the Ark of the Covenant, and you shall screen the Ark with the curtain. The tabernacle will be their place of worship for the next 40 years in the desert. And then they will use this tabernacle until they have built Solomon's tabernacle. That means the tabernacle is going to have to last 40 year, 400 years. Verse 4. You shall bring in the table and arrange its setting, and you shall bring in the lampstand and set up its lamp. You shall put the golden outer for incense before the Ark of the Covenant and set up the screen for the entrance of the tabernacle. God specifies the placement of each and every piece of furniture. Verse 6 and 7. You shall set the altar of burnt offering before the entrance of the tabernacle of the tent of the meeting and place the basin between the tent of the meeting and the altar and put water in it. In verse 8, you shall set up the court all around and hang up the screen for the gate of the court. God told Moses how to build the tabernacle and Moses delegated jobs in order to do it. God allows people to participate with him in carrying out his will. We are not to sit and watch, but to give our best effort when work needs to be done. Verse 9, Then you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it and consecrate it and all its furniture so that it shall become holy. Without God, the tabernacle is just another place. We sanctify this space as we prepare and gather for worship, as we open our minds in preparation of God's word to touch us, God's spirit to lead us, and Jesus to forgive us and set us on a new path. Jesus told us where two or three are gathered in God's name, God is present. Gathering in a holy place and seeking God will always lift your spirits. Verse 10. You shall also anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils and consecrate the altar so that the altar shall be most holy. You shall also anoint the basin with its stand and consecrate it. The physical care of the tabernacle required a long list of tasks and each was important to God's, the work of God's house. There are many seemingly unimportant tasks that must be done to maintain God's ministry. Checking up on others. Washing dishes, painting walls, shoveling snow. They may not seem very spiritual, but they are vital to the ministry of the church and have an important role in our worship of God. If you make joyful service to God your attitude, the task will prepare you and they will allow you and others to enter worship. Verses 12 through 15 tell Moses how to prepare Aaron and the priests, and then verse 16 through 33 describe the people doing as God has just commanded. After all the planning and the spiritual preparation, it is time to worship. Then an amazing thing happened. Verse 34. Then the cloud covering the tent of meeting, the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because a cloud settled upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The Israelites were the only people to ever have the glory of God, the visible presence of God, fill their worship space. Exodus ends not with a tribute to the beauty of the tabernacle or to the skill of the builders, but with a description of how its purpose was fulfilled. The tabernacle was built so God could dwell among the Israelites. Verse 36, whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the Israelites would set out on each stage of their journey. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day that the cloud was taken up. 
If the Israelites were to journey that day, the cloud would lift in the morning. If it did not lift, the, cloud, the children of Israel stayed in the camp. I can imagine them looking at that and thinking, boy, I'd rather not go today, but here it goes. Okay, we've got to pack and go. They never moved on their own. They did not vote on whether or not to move or not. And Moses didn't make the decision. It was up to the actions of the cloud. God is always with us through his spirit. We just need to learn to watch and listen. Verse 38. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was on the cloud by night, before the eyes of the house of Israel at each stage of their journey. Exodus begins with a tale of dark misery and oppression and closes with a brilliant illumination of God's glory. The book thus traces the development of the Israelites from a nation Pharaoh enslaved and tried to annihilate to a nation sheltered by God's presence. Even though there is no visible cloud, the Holy Spirit of God is here to lead and guide us. This parallels our progress through the Christian life. We begin as slaves to sin. We are redeemed by God and end our pilgrims by pilgrimage by living with God forever. To connect to the Holy Spirit, we need to be filled with the Spirit of God, pay attention to the Word of God, and, and want to do the will of God. The book of Exodus opened in the gloom of the brickyards of Egypt, and it closed in the glorious presence of the Lord in the tabernacle. The Israelites could feel it because their hearts were prepared. It was God's presence that led them through the wilderness. In the same way, God wants to deliver us from the gloom of sl slavery of sin and bring us into the glory of his presence. The more we realize that, the more we will want to seek him. King David said in Psalm 122, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. He understood the power of meeting together in God's holy space. Won't we be glad when we can gather again, again in this space? Until then, realize God is present and leading anyone with ears to listen. Let us pray. Lord, we are so grateful for your presence in our lives, gently leading us, sometimes correcting us and bringing us into your glory. Help us understand how to seek you better and how to know you better so that we will live each day in your brilliance. In Jesus' name, amen.